my name is Ricardo da Costa, and it is good to meet you. I'm here to talk to you about what Linux, open source, and distributions are. You've interfaced with Linux many times before because so many devices run Linux, including phones, TVs, networking devices, point-to-sale systems, game consoles, in-flight entertainment systems, and as well as stock exchanges. You've heard about terms like the cloud, and a lot of people may think that clouds are made up of water drops and dry air, but you know what? It's really just mainly Linux systems. Think about your favorite applications on the internet for things like mail, productivity suites, and watching entertainment. Well, they all run in the cloud on Linux-based systems. If you're a developer and you need an environment to test your code and to eventually run your application, containers streamline this. And you know what? Containers are Linux. Even the Large Hadron Collider runs Linux. So no matter who you are, you've interfaced with Linux at some stage. In fact, the very platform that you're watching this video on is probably being powered by Linux too. So if you're a systems administrator wanting to work with cloud technologies, containerization, and automation, that it is in your best interest that you learn Linux. Now, you're probably wondering what it is that I have on screen. Well, this is the source code for Ansible, which is powerful software from Red Hat, and it can be used to automate a number of tasks. Now, Linux is open source software, and what that means is that it is protected by a license that indicates that the software is freely available to anyone who wants to see it, contribute to it, and improve it. Now that's powerful. Now think about that for a moment. If there's a problem with the code that you're looking at right now, and the code didn't make use of an open source software license, well, who would fix it? Who would fix performance issues? Who would fix security issues? And who would enhance the software to make it better? With a closed source software model, the only entities that could deal with that would be those who have exposure to the source code, like the developer, or maybe a team of developers, or the organization behind the closed source software. Now think about this. Your productivity, security, and the features that you make use of may be limited to the collective technical capabilities of those who have access to the source code. Now you see, with an open source software model, anyone can contribute to it, be it to the code, ideas, or otherwise. Now, a lot of you may think that open source software is only powered by volunteers, and it's not. There are many companies who employ developers that also contribute to open source software. And you know what? Red Hat is no exception. At Red Hat, we work with the community of collaborators from other companies and volunteers to make open source software better, more stable, and more secure for you. We sponsor and contribute to a community project called Fedora, which is a Linux-based operating system. We then contribute people, ideas, and code to Fedora, and from that, we create Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And this is our commercially supported platform. Of course, we take the very best that comes out of Fedora, and we contribute our own enhancements, which are often backported. Now, our customers access Red Hat Enterprise Linux by using a subscription, and we host and maintain the code. We also have a global team and other resources that we make available under this particular subscription model. Now, when we talk about Linux, we are specifically talking about the kernel, which is the core component of any operating system, and it's responsible for things like resource allocation, file management, and security. Linux distributions are operating systems that make use of the Linux kernel, along with a number of other components, like a bootloader, application libraries, a package manager, utilities, applications, and very often, a graphical user interface. Fedora and CentOS Stream are examples of Linux distributions that are often associated with, but are not supported by Red Hat. If you need a leading global company behind your Linux operating system, then you should make use of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Thank you for watching this video. Take care and bye for now.